and welcome to a brand new episode of Zindagi. We have a very classical and entertaining show for you today. There is an exciting concert coming up and we had a chance to talk to a couple of the organizers, so stay tuned. But first, here's a word from our sponsors. Cassius Khan and Amika Kushwaha present Canada's premier classical event, Mashtari Begum Festival of Indian Classical Music and Dance, Saturday, October 25th at 6 p.m. in the Massey Theatre in New Westminster. Call 604-521-5050 or visit www.mbfestival.ca. We love making devotional songs. People call us the merchants of Sufi Green Lettuce Restaurant, spicy Indian Chinese cuisine, the first Indian style Chinese restaurant in Vancouver. Eat in or take out and catering open seven days a week. Green Lettuce Restaurant is located at 1949 Kingsway at Victoria Drive in Vancouver. Telephone 604 876 9883. Green Lettuce Restaurant in Vancouver, open every day for lunch and dinner. Green Lettuce Restaurant, a spicy Indian Chinese cuisine now open in Surrey. Eat in or take out. Unit 120-6350-120th Street in Surrey. Telephone 604-572-8677. Green Lettuce Restaurant in Surrey is now open every day for lunch and dinner. To make a reservation, call 604-572-8677. Cassius Khan and Amika Kushwaha present Canada's premier classical event, Mashtari Begum Festival of Indian Classical Music and Dance. You are invited to experience a journey of emotions through this rare classical art performed live. Saturday, October 25th at 6 p.m. in the Massey Theatre in New Westminster. Call 604-521-5050 or visit www.mbfestival.ca. When your ears begin to see, the eyes listen. Welcome back. The third annual Mashtari Begum Festival is happening on October 25th and rehearsals are well underway. We had a chance to drop in and talk to Amika and Cassius about this event. So let's take a look. This is a very ancient art form and uh, the music was designed uh, to cleanse your mind, your body and your soul. And uh, there are many different uh, what we call uh, melodic intonations or uh, ragas in our music. Uh, ragas, uh, most people would think it is a scale but actually ragas are more uh, like a thought. Um, uh, it's as sweet as sugar and treacle and they have ascending and descending notes uh, according to uh, the ras, uh, the rasa or the mood, the ras. And uh, each raga is actually catered to a different emotion, a different uh, uh, 
uh, time of the day or something to do with nature. And uh, so the music is designed in such a way that it will actually heighten your senses if that particular emotion has to be uh, experienced. And of course then we have the rhythmical aspect of the music and uh, Indian classical music has the most complex forms of rhythm. Uh, my very good friend uh, Sharanjit Singh Mand had actually said that uh, you could consider Indian classical music to be the godfather of all music. Kathak dance, uh, as all classical dance forms of India, they are a combination of yoga practices and uh, meditative practices that combine to tell stories of old mythological uh, stories of India, of nature, and a lot of the elements that we find in nature along with classical music and this rhythms, all combine into classical Indian dance. And when I dance, I somehow find myself in a somewhat of a meditative state because concentrating on hand movements, expression, footwork, and being aware of your surroundings and being in control of your body and your posture, all that takes so much of, of a attention that you find that I find myself almost in a meditative state when I'm when I really get going in my dance and there are times when you just start dancing and you don't really realize what you're gonna end up dancing and it just turns out that way so I find that through dance I can meditate I can I know it sounds a little bit petty but keep fit There are many different types of music, but of course, uh, Indian music is the most complex of all music because uh, of the, the nature of the music. Um, it's all about uh, the different scales that are used, or what we call ragas, which are really not scales, but are, are uh, melodic intonations, and also different rhythmic cycles. We can play from one to 360 different beats, uh, 360 beat cycles, sorry. And uh, there are a total of 63,318 ragas uh, catalogued in Indian music. That means that if I'm to live 100 years and start from the first day of my life and end after 100 years on the last day of my life, I still will not be able to get through all of the ragas that are in the system. India is kind of loosely divided in North and South India. So in North India, Kathak is the classical dance form that's most popular. In fact, besides Manipuri, uh, which is danced in Assam uh, area, Kathak is the one that carries through North India. And in South India, there's Bharatanatyam, Odissi, uh, Kuchipuri, uh, Kathakali, Mohaniyattam. And um, those dance forms are more uh, rigid in their mudras or hand gestures and they, they're very precise and all the hand gestures move more um, abruptly. Whereas in Kathak, we kind of smooth everything out. So if we wanted to go from here to there, it's really, it's a very smooth action in Kathak. And it's more familiar perhaps to people to see Kathak. What I explain is, if you're familiar with flamenco and ballet, this is for my Western audience uh, friends, 
uh, flamingo and ballet, if you kind of ma mix it together with the strength and the fluidity combined in one is what I find Kathak is. Costuming in dance, just like in theater, uh, is a very important aspect. In Kathak, we usually wear um, the North Indian style of a lehenga, uh, which is the long dress and the blouse with a, with a veil. Uh, that's one co costume. And the alternative costume is a, more of a Mughal style frock dress. So it's a shorter skirt and you can see the legs while they're doing the fast movement and when we're spinning the skirt spins out and uh, you know the jewelry, the makeup, the eyes are very accentuated and uh, so you can see all the expressions, the, the nails, everything is, it's just like in theatre, all the aspects need to combine so that you are fully aware of your presence as a dancer on stage. I believe that my passion comes from just uh, everyday, everyday uh, nature. It comes from uh, uh, my relationships with people. It comes from uh, my relationship with my instruments. Uh, my instruments are, are also my best friends as well. And uh, whenever I see them, I want to play. And I think that's the, that's the biggest uh, uh, inspiration for me right there. My wife is a Kathak dancer, so she inspires me as well. Uh, so inspiration comes from all places. Playing the tabla requires a great sensitivity in your hands because you have to apply the right amounts of pressure and you also have to make sure that all the muscles in your arms and your back and your shoulders are developed properly, all the twitch fibers are developed properly so that you're able to play at higher speeds or at lower speeds. So everything is connected from the fingertips to our brain and uh, they say that the fingertips is the most uh, uh, sensitive part of your body. Um, when you touch something and you close your eyes, every texture can be felt by your fingertips and that, that is transported here through motor nerves. So um, the art of playing requires for the mind and for your hands to be synced together. So that is what takes uh, lifetimes to achieve.